Welcome to LA. What's going on, Unfazed crew? So here I am at kind of a sketchy, but also very fascinating location. I am at the Cecil Hotel, well just adjacent to the Cecil Hotel, which has a very sordid and dark history, but I figured I'd come in. I'm in LA, so I might as well come and see where all the horrible things happened. We can't go inside anymore, it's been closed for a long time, obviously, for obvious reasons. But uh, the stay on main, which is connected to it, is open, so I'm gonna see if I can get in there. But if not, we're gonna get some good exterior shots of the Cecil and uh, kinda see where the horror happened. Place, like a transition house. Oh yeah? Yeah. Cool man, thank you. Uh, Are they gonna do anything with it, do you know? Yeah, they're gonna put the home. Oh wow. Clean this up. Oh dang, okay. So I'm guessing this might be part of the stay on main. I'm not sure. Alright, so this looks like possibly part of the stay on main. But I just see one security guard in there and I don't really see any kind of accommodations. So unless I'm missing something, that place is closed. Probably for a good reason. Let's take one more loop outside the front of what was formerly the Cecil Hotel. Hotel Cecil, whatever order you want to put those words in. Same place. Man, I wish we could go in. That'd be horrifying, wouldn't it? Here's where the action happened, guys. Tons and tons of people, unfortunately, were murdered here. Murderers actually lived here. I know uh, the Night Stalker supposedly lived here back in the day and a few other notorious characters and of course the story of Elisa Lamb squeaky brakes I'm telling you guys if you ever want to get into recording videos just prepare for this brakes squeaking alarms going off sirens there's always gonna be some kind of noise messing up your take so the story of Elisa Lamb really came to national and international attention a few years ago. She was the college student who was staying here in kind of a hostel dorm type situation. I think it was hostile in multiple ways. But yeah, unfortunately she passed away and uh, they found her body up in the water tower on top of this building. And there's a great Netflix documentary about it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please check it out about the Cecil Hotel. But that all happened here. And I'm gonna see I'm gonna see if I can get a glimpse of those water towers. Meet Zilla, downtown's finest burger. Not anymore. This seems like a safe idea. Let's go into the alley of the Cecil Hotel. Nothing like some shit stains on the wall and hypodermic needles. Nice. All right, 
I'm gonna leave because there's some homeless dudes back there. And I think I encroached upon their territory. So I'm gonna head back to the street. There's a tragic mannequin accident. I don't think she'll recover. As you can see, the businesses around here are all thriving, for the most part. A beehive of activity. As you can tell, California is doing a great job to take care of its homeless population. All right guys, now if you look off to the side here, side of the building, and if I zoom in, we can see one of the water towers on top of the roof. Now, Elisa Lamb was found in one of those water towers. Actually, if you look closely, you can see two. You can see the edge of one of the second ones right behind it. So one of those, one of those water towers up there, Elisa Lamb's corpse was discovered inside of. Very sad, very sad case. And what was horrible about it aside from the fact that she lost her life, is that the people inside here, the guests and the residents, they were using that water on a daily basis for, I believe, well over a month as her body decomposed inside the tanks. They were drinking the water that had her remains in it. They were bathing in it. And they wondered why the water smelled so funny and so horrible. Turns out it's because they were drinking and bathing in remnants of Elisa Lamb. Truly horrific. A truly horrific story and there's so much mystery surrounding it we don't know who killed her we don't know why there's no footage of her except for that footage of her in that elevator if you don't know what I'm talking about definitely look it up Elisa Lamb case super super fascinating super sad really a tragedy but if you look up there you can see the water towers the water tanks whatever you want to refer to them as check that out Hotel Cecil, low daily weekly rates. I wonder why. That's where it happened, guys.
there we can get another shot. You can see a third water tower up there. That's where it happened, guys. That's where it happened. Always an engine revving. Always. Every fucking time. Give you an honest look at the city here. Lots of homeless encampments and tents. All right, from here we can get a really good view of those water tanks up top there. Tragic, man. Actually, I found a very cool restaurant just a couple blocks away from the Cecil. It's got a very cool rock and roll theme here. So I'm gonna have myself some lunch, and then we're gonna go to a rock and roll iconic location right after this. All right, here I am in front of the iconic Morrison Hotel from the Doors album of the same name. Not much left in terms of the front of the building, but let's take a look. Damn, dude, look at that. It's all covered up. But this is where Jim and the band would have been. Right through this window here. So legend has it that Jim Morrison wanted to name the album Morrison Hotel, obviously because of his last name, Jim Morrison. But the hotel would not have it. They would not allow them to do a photo shoot inside the hotel. So, allegedly, what happened is the bandmates went inside, unbeknownst to the hotel staff, and slowly started hanging out in front of this window right here, inside the hotel bar. So, John Densmore, Ray Manzarek, Robbie Krieger, and of course, Jim Morrison all went inside right here, lined up real quick, and a photo was taken. I'll have to look up who took the photo, I'm not totally sure. But, it was right here, right through this glass. I gotta touch it. I gotta touch the filthy LA stained glass with ash and graffiti and meth residue. But look at that, it happened right here, man. You know what I think is such a shame is that buildings like this here just fall into squalor. It's totally forgotten about. Like, what a shame, dude, what a waste. If they were smart, some savvy business owner with a little bit of money would come in and clean this place up and totally renovate it and make it look exactly as it did in like 1970 or whenever that album came out, 69, right around that era. And make it authentic to that time. Make it a Doors theme. Have a stage at night where a band could come in and play. It'd be a hot spot for a Doors cover band, let me tell you. Anyway, if they did that, this place would be absolutely thriving. But alas, they don't. And they are not as smart as you and I. But here is Morrison Hotel, guys. Right by Pico Boulevard. Check it out. Compared to the last vlog I saw of this place, which I believe was the Grim Life Collective, already this place is in a deeper state of disrepair. Which is a damn shame. But like I said, I would love to see this place be renovated and turned into something that's actually used. Here's the doorway that Jim and the boys went through. Check it out. Obviously locked, son of a bitch. Look at that. 1246 Morrison Hotel. Let's get a shot of the surrounding area. You can see the glory that is downtown LA. Pretty snazzy, huh? So believe it or not, I actually do have a Doors story myself. Believe it or not. When I was 23 years old, I actually very seriously considered moving to Los Angeles. So I quit my job at the time as a server. I brought what little savings I had and came out to Los Angeles for about a month. And I worked on indie film set out here. I stayed with an acquaintance. I uh, stayed at a couple hotels. I kind of hopped around. But it was a really good experience. It was a really good time in my life, and I'm glad that I did it. I ultimately, obviously, did not end up moving to Los Angeles, but I do value the time that I had here. But what I will say is I did have a... <laughs> can't talk. <laughs> I did have a cool Doors story. I went to the Whiskey A Go Go, which was one of the original clubs that the Doors used to play at very frequently back in the 60s. And uh, 
there was a Doors tribute band there called Wild Child. So I was like, dude, I should really go and check this band out because I love the Doors. So I went and saw them. They were amazing. They were fantastic. I had a fantastic time. And I was there partying, just enjoying myself. And about halfway through the set, they took an intermission. And they said, hey, we have a special guest to bring on stage. And it turned out being Robbie Krieger, the guitarist of the Doors. He joined the cover band for the next hour of the show, 45 minutes to an hour. Basically, he finished out the show with them. And it was absolutely incredible. So I got to see the closest thing possible to seeing the Doors at my age. So I got to see one of the real Doors with a Doors cover band. And it was absolutely fantastic, absolutely magical, and the Whiskey A Go Go was just an absolute blast. Anyway, that's my Doors story. Here's the Morrison Hotel. I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Remain unfazed. Mr. Mojo rising! Mr. Mojo rising! Which way to go? I still don't know.